Hi, everybody. My name is Amr Asher. I'm the Assistant Director of Research at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society and part of the Secretariat for the Global Network of Internet and Society Centers. And today, I'm really excited to be speaking with Professor Jacques Dewara, who is a professor at the University of Geneva and also is the director of their newly formed Digital Law Center. And today I'm so excited to, to speak with you because I know that we've been long-term collaborators, Jack, and you've been part of the Network of Centers for a long time, but the Digital Law Center is a relatively new undertaking for you. So before we talk more about the Digital Law Center, would you like to just briefly introduce yourself? Yes, thanks very much, Amar. It's great to, um, to see you virtually uh, today. Um, so um, I'm now a professor uh, at the University of Geneva um, at the law school and I teach uh, intellectual property as well as contract law and, and also digital law. And um, I'm now in charge of the digital uh, law center um, about which we may want to talk more in a few seconds, I guess. Great, so that's um, my first question for you. I would love to hear a little bit more about the Digital Law Center, how it came into being and what it's focused on and how you are operating it. Great, um, sure. Um, so before uh, I shall talk about the center, I, I first would like to, um, to indicate that I had a chance to, um, to work closely with the Berkman Klein Center and other members of the network of centers in the past, uh, before the center, our digital law center was created, and that's quite recent because it was made uh, in the last months over the summer. Um, the center um, that we've created is basically part of a university-wide uh, initiative in order to foster digital activities at the University of Geneva. And uh, one of the reasons uh, why the university wants to engage more in digital activities is also because we're very privileged to have this quite um, unique uh, ecosystem in terms of global digital policy making in Geneva. And as you certainly know, the IGF, for instance, has uh, its secretariat here in Geneva, and we have uh, many other global digital policy uh, makers and players uh, located basically at our doors. Obviously, in, um, in the face, uh, in the time of COVID, that doesn't make a huge difference because we do everything virtually, but in a normal uh, situation when we can uh, promote face-to-face -face meetings, uh, this is a huge uh, asset and uh, the university really wants to capitalize on that, which led basically to the creation of the Digital Law Center. And uh, we're basically continuing um, and developing activities that we've uh, uh, launched in the past in terms of education, research, and also policy making in, in various facets of digital law on which I guess we will come in a few minutes. Excellent. Uh, so th that would be great to tell us more about what aspects of digital law that you are focused on right now or that you would like to focus on and how that might contribute to this ecosystem that you're in both within Geneva, but also within this broader ecosystem of, of internet and society centers. Because I know that many of our centers really do come from a number of different disciplines and and, and obviously focused on um, many start start at or exist at law schools, but work cross disciplinary and work across sectors as well as you work with both the private sector and the public and the public sector in that sense. So we'd love to just hear a little bit more about um, some of those specific issues that you're currently looking at or that you'd like to be researching. So we've uh, launched, by way of illustration, a, a project uh, two years ago uh, on uh, cybersecurity and liability issues to, to see how uh, the legal concept of liability can apply when faced with uh, cyber attacks and cybersecurity issues, and which uh, has led to various uh, publications and, and, and also events that we've organized at the university. And, and we have recently focused on one specific aspect of cybersecurity um, policy, which is uh, cyber insurance. So we've been working on a paper um, which was actually a mandate from the public uh, government uh, here in Geneva, the, the Canton of Geneva, which basically wanted uh, to explore whether cyber insurance policy might be a relevant tool for small and medium enterprises to increase the level of protection uh, in terms of cybersecurity. So that's one 
pipeline activity and for that specific uh, project we realized um, basically uh, that we had a lot of, of players uh, located in Geneva and, and the other places in Switzerland, which could also have a significant role um, to play in, in, this, um, in this discussion. And we always try as a matter of principle, and that's the case also for that cyber insurance uh, project, to connect the dots, so to say, uh, and make sure that we get uh, interdisciplinary perspectives and also cross-border perspective, because we, we all know that many, if not all of these issues would need ideally to be discussed and solved at the global level. Excellent, thank you. And um, I think that's a great cross-sectional issue in particular to highlight because of the ways that or the perspectives that I think something like cybersecurity really needs in order to address some of these problems. So it's not only the legal perspectives, but it's very much the technical perspectives and the governance perspectives that you have to address while trying to address, while trying to solve challenges of cybersecurity. Um, so I'd love to hear more about your plans for the next year. I know that it's it, the center, as you mentioned, was just formed in the past couple of months and that you have a lot of history of work that you've built on, whether it be on issues of cybersecurity or digital law, but what is it that you're most excited about coming up over the next year? So what we um, will continue and develop is to build on our growing uh, community of digital law and digital policy experts um, over the next months. And more specifically, what we will organize again next year is our digital law summer school, uh, in the course of which we had the privilege to work with uh, with the Berkman Klein colleagues, specifically Urs Gasser and Chris Bavitz. And Chris, I must say that here too um, has been uh, an incredible um, uh, support for us because he was here for, from the first year of the summer school, which we launched back in 2014. And every year since then, he has uh, joined us. I mean, that was this year uh, done uh, for the first time in a virtual way, but otherwise uh, Chris uh, really came back every year and supported us in that process. So we will certainly uh, launch again our Digital Law Summer School and also involve more and more uh, alumni and would be of, of course delighted to involve other colleagues and centers uh, from the network. And in connection to the Digital Law Summer School, what we will also do um, is to reorganize our Digital Law Research Colloquium, which is an event which takes place during the summer school in the course of which uh, young uh, scholars uh, have the opportunity to present their ongoing research project and get input and feedback from more from more senior people. So that's certainly what we want to do. That's for, let's say, education and research. And in terms of policy, we will certainly continue to work on, on that topic that I mentioned earlier in terms of cyber insurance and to continue and increase our activity about uh, cybersecurity uh, topics. Um, but of course, um, we will also be um, very um, uh, interested to follow and be active uh, about interesting developments uh, in terms of digital policy uh, making taking place in Europe. Uh, specifically with respect to uh, data governance and, and data law, uh, which, uh, as you certainly know, is uh, really in a very fast moving uh, mode, so to say, uh, in terms of upcoming European regulations and projects. So we've also been working on that and we'll certainly continue to, to, to do so in the future. And that topic in particular on data governance is one thing that I've certainly been hearing a lot from other network of centers centers as a as a real topic of interest especially over the next five years as as there is a complex environment of regulations emerging as there's some scholarship emerging around data governance and new questions about data governance so i am glad that you brought that up as a topic and then as well i've also been hearing more from different centers about this particular modality of of summer schools and i know that University of Geneva and you in particular have been running these for a very long time now and have established a really wonderful example and template, one that I think has been replicated in a number of spaces around the world. So for instance, I was just speaking with a network of a new network of centers colleague in Ghana who is doing internet sort of internet governance summer schools and, um, and winter schools. And so this is something that I think has been a real feature of the global network of internet society centers where 
centers have been able to organize these programs and involve other collaborators from other centers, like you were saying, Professor Chris Babbitts, who was involved in your center. I think that's one of the most unique features of, of the network that's happened over the last couple of years. Finally, I would love to just ask you about ways that people can collaborate with you. I know that the, the summer school is one. It sounds like you have a really exciting um, agenda for the Digital Law Center. What are, what are the ways that you would like to invite others within the network of centers to collaborate with you? Or what are possibilities to do that? I think um, I uh, really want to uh, start by emphasizing what you just said and uh, the importance of for us also to share the potential best practices that we developed over time about the summer school and about other activities that we have. I think it's critical, uh, if I think more broadly and more fundamentally, uh, to, to educate um, as broadly as possible and as, as clearly and as efficiently as possible about uh, global digital policy uh, issues and would be certainly delighted to see uh, how we could cooperate with other centers in order to, to share our experience um, um, in terms of education. And in that respect, one thing that I would also uh, love to explore with, with other centers is to make sure that uh, we can somehow find ways to um, make our local ecosystem in Geneva accessible to the members of the centers. So as I was saying earlier, um, I think we, we, we are privileged uh, to have uh, this interaction with many of the global um, policy makers. And it would obviously be great if we could facilitate the interactions between other members of the center and uh, this global community also to make sure that there is a there are strong and uh, mutually fruitful ties and interactions which can uh, be created, uh, which can only lead to positive results uh, so that um, we as academics, and I speak for myself at least, can better understand the policy implications uh, of certain issues on which we're working. And uh, conversely, we hope that the policymakers can perhaps have a better understanding of uh, certain of the underlying issues that we economics uh, may uh, have uh, explored in, in more details than policymakers can do in view of the constraints that they, have, they face. So I really hope in a nutshell that uh, the Digital Law Center can somehow facilitate this interaction between the local Geneva-based um, international community and the, the, the members of, of the network of center. I love that as a particular theme of the network of centers, which is making the local global and making the global local. That's very much, I think, in the spirit of how we've thought about the development of this network and facilitating this network, where it's about peer connections amongst nodes within the network, but it's also very much about the network as a whole. And how do we actually use this basis of a network to highlight and elevate and learn about local issues and connect to local ecosystems such as the one in Geneva and how do you also bring that outwards and I think that the Digital Law Center is such a wonderful representation of of that nexus where both can happen and you can have sort of perspectives from outside Geneva come in and and share them with you whether it be through formats like summer schools or on education or on policy issues but then you can also share that knowledge more broadly with the rest of the network of centers as you have been doing for the past many, many years. So I really love that as a, as a point um, and as a theme for as we talk about the network of centers and, and its role within this broader space. Finally, is there um, anything else that you would like to share or add to this conversation? Um, just um, a quick note of, of gratitude to um, what you and, and all the, the colleagues at the Berkman Klein Center have been doing over the years. Um, I had the chance to spend some time in Boston and Cambridge a few years ago, and I think this is absolutely fascinating what you've done with, of course, the other centers involved in the network of centers. And I think it's really critical, and I think also in terms of geopolitical situation, I think it's critical for us to come together and, and, and try to, to come up with global views uh, and trans interdisciplinary views, transversal views on many uh, of these issues uh, that basically concern everyone on, on the planet. So I think it's, it's fantastic and I'm really grateful and honored to be part now of this uh, network of centers. 
We're very much missing you in Cambridge, along with many of our other collaborator, collaborators who often traveled through Cambridge during these um, months of the academic year. So it is difficult to not have that in person, but at least we have the second best thing, which is to be able to connect in person in real time over, over video. So I'm grateful at least for that and for the excuse to have a reason to talk with you as well. So thank you again, um, Jack. It's always wonderful. It's always a pleasure. So I appreciate you being part of this conversation series. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you, Omar. Thank you. Great. Thanks.